Hi everyone, this is Nyan. Today I'm going to be painting runner ducks. This was requested by a couple of people a while back, but I'm sorry I don't really keep a record of who asked or who suggested what video. So if you feel like this is coming from you, whoever you are, please comment down below. As you guys know, since I don't really feel comfortable painting animals, I always look for references. And I came across this picture from Pinterest and I really like the composition of these three ducks. So I'm just going to create my outline based on this picture. I think the angle is also fairly simplistic here and the body itself is more like a rectangular shape with soft edges but I just have to play around with the angle very slightly. The one in the middle is more or less facing forward and the one on the right is facing towards the left side so the angle of the rectangle would be a little bit more skewed. You can actually break this down by drawing out the rectangles first and figuring out the angles but personally I'm just going to go ahead and paint the individual ducts so I just connected the rectangle to the neck and also the head which is more or less a little bit rounded. I also like to pay extra attention to some of the subtle curves of the body especially where the thigh is connected to the torso but you can always leave those features last after you've drawn the basic composition. I also found another reason why I picked this reference image is because most of the legs and the feet are hidden behind the grass except for one which has its one leg up. So this makes it so much easier because I'm not really good with feet angles. And by the way, just like usual, if you don't want to draw out the outline and get straight to painting, I will have the traceable outline available in my coffee shop. But anyway, getting back to the sketch, here I'm drawing out the beak and where the beak is facing actually plays a huge role on position of the duck's head. And you can see that there's a slight rectangular or even a trapezium shape that is connecting the beak to the face. And those areas are something that you want to pay close attention to, as well as some of the foreshortened shapes, especially for the stuck in the middle. In terms of the eyes, I like to align them to the corners of the trapezium, drawing a slight angle outwards from the starting point, and then closing with a tiny horizontal line at the top. Once I've jotted down the main features, this is when I want to start paying closer attention to the form. So here I'm placing the area of the breast and this will just help as guideline when we paint later on so we know where to place certain shadows. This also applies to the head so you want to make sure that some of the subtle curved lines are placed now so it's much easier when we paint later on. Here I notice from the reference image that the top of the head is slightly more narrow compared to the cheek which is a bit more wide and that's something that I'm going to depict for all three ducks. Here I'm also clearing out the curved lines for the body of the ducks. So from the top or the shoulder of the duck, it kind of goes inward slightly before it connects to the thighs, which again goes outwards, but these curves are very subtle. For the rest of the features, like the background and the grass, I'm going to freehand them later, so let's get to the colors. This is drawn Brilliant by Holbein, Paints Grey Bluish by Schmincke, Vermilion by Holbein, Burnt Umber by Holbein, Hooker Screen by Cotman, and New Gamboge by Daniel Smith. Now let's get straight to painting. I'm going to start by painting the grass. For this, the basic color mixture that I'm going to use is Hooker Screen with New Gamboge, and I'm going to use a really thin consistency to also wet the surface while avoiding the feet or the body of the duck. And I'm just going to cover the area at the bottom without touching the edge of the paper. Once I'm done, I'm going to follow this up by using the same mix, which has a bit more hooker's green in the ratio, but this time I also added a bit of burnt umber for a warmer green. And I'm using a medium to thick consistency, painting vertically on the damp surface to create a loose grass texture 
then I'm going to follow this up using the previous mix of New Gamboge and Hooker's Green for a brighter green. So those are the greens that you can alternate between. I'm also going to use a slightly darker value or a brighter green in between the ducts. And since I was painting on a damp surface, some of the colors might fade a bit more than I wanted to. So here I'm just going over certain areas again. As the surface starts to dry, I like to add finer details. So here I'm still using those same colors, but you can of course play around with the ratio. But I'm slowly building up the layers to create finer grass textures. I'm going to leave the grass for now and paint the beaks of the ducks. For this, I just use a mix of New Gamboge with a little bit of Vermilion to turn it into a light orange. According to the reference image, there's a little bit of a darker value. It kind of looks like brown to me. So I'm just going to add this brown for the tip of the beaks while the surface is mostly dry so the paint or the darker value doesn't spread out too much. I also use the burnt umber to paint those dots on top of the beak. Then I layered on a bit more of that orange mixture to give a bit more volume to the beaks. Next I'm going to start painting the ducts and I'm going to begin by wetting or dampening the surface evenly around the chest area and the neck. I don't want this to be puddling wet but just evenly dampened so the paint doesn't travel too fast. And for the color here I'm using a mix of burnt umber with a bit of vermilion and new gamboge. As you can see I just applied it using the tip of my brush very randomly so I also left out some white negative space as well and I'm going to follow it up with a darker brown from a mix of burnt umber and paints gray bluish and I'm using a light consistency here just like before I'm applying it with the tip of my brush very lightly you can also see some streaks but because the surface is still damp the paint will just mingle with each other naturally Along the edges, I made sure that the color is applied lighter so there's a nicer transition going towards the white then here, as for the bottom, I'm going to leave it as white, so I'm adding a grayish shadow for those areas that I drew out earlier. For the color mixture, I use the same burnt umber and paints gray bluish mix, but this time it has a bit more paints gray bluish in the ratio. I applied the paint in a very thin consistency on the darkest areas, then I softened the edges using a clean damp brush. I'm also going to add the shadows for the neck as well as the head using the same method but as you can see from the reference image the bottom is a little bit darker so I make sure to use an even lighter consistency for the head. I quite like the markings for the head of the first duck in the reference image so I'm going to create something similar. Here I'm adding a little bit of burnt umber. I made sure to paint it on lightly in case I didn't like how it looks. This way I can just keep on layering little by little until I find the correct value. Of course to layer I need to wait for the first layer to dry. So meanwhile I move on to painting the textures for the body. For this I use a mixture of the base color and a little bit of the gray mixture as well and using a thin consistency I try to tap my brush downwards following the curvature of the body to help give a bit of volume. Just like the base color I like to alternate the tones of brown so for a darker brown I would add a bit more paints gray bluish in the ratio. I'm not going to cover the whole brown area with this texture instead I like to leave a bit of the base color showing so the painting hopefully won't look overworked. Now for the white area, I used the previous grayish mix from Burnt Umber and Paints Gray Bluish and in a thin consistency, I added a subtle furry texture instead of the feathery texture. And after that, I'm just going to layer on a slightly darker value for the face. As for the duck on the right, I'm not going to wet the surface and I'm painting the head straight away. I want the head to be this muted green color so I use a mix of hooker's green with paints gray bluish and a little bit of burnt umber to warm up the green. I try to avoid the eye as I'm painting this and I'm only going to cover until halfway down the neck and where it ends I try to curve the edges to give volume to the neck and make sure that it doesn't look flat. To add more volume, I also use a slightly thicker consistency for the left side of the neck for a bit of shadow. 
and I make sure to soften the edges using a clean dry brush this time because the paint was traveling faster than I wanted to. Now moving on to the rest of the body, I'm just going to wet the surface like I did for the first duck. I also wanted to soften the edge of the neck but the paint ended up spreading too far. But I'm just going to leave it for now and move on to paint the body while the surface is still nice and damp. For this, I'm using a mix of Burnt Umber with Paints Grey Bluish and a little bit of Vermilion for a rich reddish brown. Instead of placing the colors randomly, this time I intentionally painted short curved lines following the contour of the body. This is just to create a slightly different texture compared to the first duck, but I want it to still look feathery and I find that placing it this way also helped with the volume. Then just like before, I want to soften the edges and since the paper was a little bit too dry already for the paint to travel, I just used a clean damp brush. Now moving back to the top of the head, I'm going back in with the green mixture from earlier and I'm placing a thick consistency on the left side. Then I'm going to follow this up with a lighter yellow green. So this is from the previous mixture with added yellow green from Hooker's Green and New Gamboge. Once the brown is completely dry and the colors faded a bit, I'm going to add more textures using the same brown as the base, but this time I'm painting on a dry surface. But just like before, I'm painting on the short curved lines following the contour of the body so the edges doesn't spread this time, instead it stays nice and sharp. On the left side, I'm using the same color but in a lighter consistency, and just like the previous duck, I'm not going to cover the whole brown area, but I want to leave out some of the base color. Just like the first duck, I want the bottom to be white, so here for the shadows, I'm using the same mixture from Burnt Umber and Paints Grey Bluish. This time, the mixture has a little bit more Paints Grey Bluish in the ratio, so the color is a bit cooler. But just like before, I'm using a thin consistency to paint on the shadow area, then I'm going to soften the edges using a clean damp brush. As you can see from the reference image, the bottom right is much darker so I'm going to use the same mix in a slightly thicker consistency but not too dark and I'm just going to line the edges then pull some of the paint and soften it using a clean damp brush. This is something that I'm going to lightly build layer by layer because I don't want it too dark in case it doesn't look white anymore. And since the bottom is a little bit too damp at the moment, I'm going to move on to the top part, layering on a bit of the same color mixture in a light consistency this time. I apply it by tapping my brush to create a textured surface and I focus the darker values where the breast of the duck is. And here going back to the bottom since the surface is a little bit more dry now. Finally, let's move on to the duck in the middle. You can follow the reference image and leave this white if you would like to. And if that's the case, you would just need to paint the shadows using the same green mixture. But I want to give this duck a little bit of color and I basically use the same gray mixture but with more burnt umber in the ratio and also with a bit of new gamboge for a different tone of brown. This time I dampen the whole body including the neck and while the surface is still damp, I just randomly place on splodges of the color and letting the paint travel naturally. After I'm happy with the distribution, I'm going to add the darker values using the same mixture and a slightly thicker consistency. For the white shadows, I want to paint on a dry surface and the bottom is more or less dry now. As you can see, the edges are nice and sharp. And in terms of the color, I just used the previous brown mix with added paints gray bluish. It shouldn't matter too much that it has a bit of new gamboge in the mixture. And again, I'm just going to use the same method as how I've painted the bottom of the previous ducks. Thank you. 
Now I'm going to add the feathery texture on the body and this time I'm going to combine the two brush strokes so some textures are a bit more of that narrow line by tapping my brush vertically, sometimes a little bit horizontally as well. And I'm also going to combine it with those short curve lines. However, when I'm applying this, I still want to follow the cross contour lines for the duck breast so you don't lose the volume of the painting. In terms of the color, I just added a little bit of burnt umber to the previous mixture for a thicker and a bit of a richer brown. And I'm painting using a thicker consistency on the right and a lighter consistency for the left side. Don't forget to also paint the face. Here I'm just using the light grey to paint the shadow following the line of the beak and also the cheeks. If you only want to paint the ducks, you can go ahead and adjust the balance of the values and don't forget to also paint the legs and the feet. But for me, I want to paint the surrounding area. So now I'm going to add some tall grass and also flowers. Since I still have a lot of green on my palette, I just reactivated it with water. And I'm just using a medium consistency here and flicking my brush upwards. I put a little bit more pressure at the bottom and as I flick up, I put much less pressure so the tip becomes nice and sharp. I also do this slightly curved so the grass looks like it's slightly moving and less static. Here I'm painting the feet and the legs after I paint the tall grass, this way the colors won't overlap each other. And in terms of the mixture, I'm just using the same color as the beak, which is from New Gamboge and a little bit of vermilion. For the shadow of the leg, I'm just repurposing the brown that I still have on my palette by reactivating it with water and I'm just using a light consistency and placing it on the areas according to the reference image. Before I paint on more surrounding elements, I want to make sure I'm happy with the balance of the values. So here I'm increasing the darker contrast for the bottom part of the duck, as you can see, since that area is much darker compared to the rest of the body. Between the second duck and the third duck, there's a small patch of grass, and I'm just going to layer on a slightly darker value, which will give a better definition to the outline of those two ducks. I'm also going to do the same here with the patch of grass under the third duck. Once I'm more or less happy with the ducks, I'm going to start adding on the flowers. I'm just going to create really simple pink flowers or peach flowers from a mix of vermilion and drawn brilliant in a medium consistency. I'm applying these flowers on the sides as well as on top of some of the lighter areas of the ducks and I want to play around with the size, angle, as well as the height. I'm working quickly here while the surface of the flowers are still a bit damp. I continued it down with the sepals using a mix of new gamboge, hooker's green, and a bit of burnt umber. I also painted on the stems which I kind of wiggle around to give more of a movement and added more finer grass. For the eyes of these ducks, I'm just going to use my black 0.1 pen to make it much easier since the area is very small and I also left out a little bit of white spot for the highlights. Once I feel like I have enough flowers for the foreground, I'm going to start adding on the background. I'm going to add more of the grassy texture as well as tall flowers this time. I'm also going to add more leaves for a little bit more texture. All this is painted in a medium to light consistency so it doesn't take away from the focal point of the ducks. For the color itself, I don't want it to be too dark so I'm just using a mix of Booker's Green with New Gamboge. You can also mute down the color by adding a bit of burnt umber. As I get further in the background, I do want to lighten the color even more, so I just use an even thinner consistency. This will just give a little bit more depth even if it's very subtle. Same goes for the flowers. I'm going to paint similar shapes as before, but this time I'm using a much lighter consistency.
for the leaves, you can add different types of leaves as well. So I made shorter and longer ones. For the background area closer to the ducts, I'm glazing over a very thin consistency of the yellow green. This is completely optional, but I just personally feel that this would give less contrast to the elements of the background, making them more subtle, and this will then enhance the foreground in my opinion. And that's basically it. I just like to look at the whole painting again and make some final adjustments to balance everything out. If you guys enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe for more content like this and click on the bell icon to be notified of new videos that I post every Friday. Like usual, the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in my description box. If you guys are still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you guys at the next one. Bye!